So moving on to the thrombophilias and pregnancy complications. Now, placenta is a vascular organ, and this is particularly the case after 10 weeks of pregnancy. And the thrombophilias, apart from causing blood clots in the mom, can also cause blood clots in the placenta. This can lead to what we call the placental vascular complications, and these include fetal loss or miscarriage, preeclampsia, intrauterine growth retardation, and placental abruption, and I'm going to speak about each of those now. Fetal loss unfortunately occurs in about 15% of pregnancies. A recurrent pregnancy loss is defined as three consecutive miscarriages, and it does affect about 1% to 2% of women. Of course, this is a devastating thing to have to go through. Potential causes of fetal loss include chromosomal problems, uterine abnormalities, hormonal problems, autoimmune diseases, but the thrombophilias, both the inherited thrombophilias and also the antiphospholipid syndrome, and in fact, in particular, the antiphospholipid syndrome, are also associated with fetal loss. The mechanism is likely that there are blood clots in the placenta, depriving the baby of food or oxygen, and thus we have the loss. Preeclampsia is pregnancy-induced or aggravated high blood pressure or hypertension. You also have excess protein deposition into the urine, and most women experience leg edema or swelling. This is in a medical emergency, both for the mom and the baby, and usually necessitates delivery of the baby fairly soon. Intrauterine growth retardation is when the fetus is small for gestational age, and the true definition has the fetus being at less than 10th percentile for weight. Placental abruption is when you have premature separation of the placenta from the uterus prior to delivery, and this is a true medical emergency. For the mom, they're at huge risk of bleeding out. For the baby, they're losing that connection to the mom, so they're instantly deprived of oxygen and food, and this is something that the mom just has to be rushed for a cesarean section immediately. Now, we do know that there is a higher incidence of factor V Leiden for thrombin mutation, protein S, protein C, antithrombin deficiency, and the antiphospholipid syndrome in women with these obstetric, obstetric complications, and particularly when these are severe complications.